So the next and last present uh, presenter today is Peter Kopong, and he's a professor at the University of uh, Cape Coast in the International Stingless Bee Center. And the title of his talk is Pollination Studies in the Shea Parklands in Northern Ghana. See it now. We can okay. see you, uh, your slideshow and your cursor if you wanted to use it. Okay, so um, my the title is Pollination Studies in Shea Parklands in the Northern Region of Ghana. I'm, co-authoring with one of my students, Latif Idris Nasari. And uh, we're looking at the background of share, progress of share pollination studies so far, beekeeping for addressing pollination deficits. And we'll look at the findings of this study and we conclude. Um, share is a very economic tree occurring in the West Africa sub-region, uh, green, the area covers green and yellow. The green is a subspecies, a uh, paradosa, and the yellow is a uh, uh, nilotica. There are two subspecies of the uh, Vetilaria paradosa. Shea butter has many local industrial uses and uh, as a result, there's increasing demand for share in cosmetic and confessionary industries across the world. Income from share butter contributes largely to the livelihood of the people who live in, um, within the parklands. Pollination ecology of share. Um, the flower development is protogynous. Share is highly insect pollinator dependent. And uh, in a paper in 2014, I, I did the research and found that bees are the primary uh, pollinators of share butter. And, um, and the, most of the insects that pollinate uh, Apis mellifera, the rest are stingless bees, Meliponula bucari, Meliponula ferruginea, and Hypotrigona species. Basically, these are the major uh, uh, pollinators. There are other flower visitors which we are not sure how much they contribute to pollinating the flowers of Shea. These are Comso melissa, which is a solitary bee, then some butterflies and some wasps. Uh, we chose to investigate how beekeeping can address the pollination deficit. The this uh, share flowers a lot, but within the share parkland, there's a lot of anthropogenic disturbances which have degraded the, degraded the share parkland. This includes um, fire. There's an annual fire we graze through the parklands uh, as a result, uh, destroying the nesting site and some of the colonies of some bees or other animals. Then also they do intercropping. So obviously disturbing the ecosystem. Share therefore has a, a pollen deficit uh, has been in 2020 by the Lini. So there's the dire need of strategies to boost pollination services for optimal yield of share since it is in high demand. So uh, in this study, we explored using beekeeping, in, introducing beekeeping into share parklands. And so, uh, the, in Ghana, this share con is limited to the Guinea Savannah zone, mainly grassland, and with only the share trees as the main trees. Um, it, within the share parkland, we had established in 2007 hives and 
color uh, apiaries in the parklands and the experimental sites. We chose where at least seven to 10 colonized bees per apiary. And then the focal trees were selected at four distances away from the apiary, 100 meters, 500 meters, 1,000 meters, and 4,000 meters as a control. And you can see in the background picture, the apiaries have been fenced off to protect them from theft and other uh, fire grazing through. And the trees that you see in the picture are mainly shea butter trees. Uh, three uh, treatments were applied, hoping, pollination, insect exclusion, bug, and hand pollination. And there were three replicates each per tree. So the data collected were number of fruits yield, uh, fruit weight, fruit size, then we depop it and also weigh the nut weight and nut size. The results indicated that on the left is uh, immature fruits. We realized that API had a significant effect on fruit set within the range of 500 meters from the, from the API. Then we realized that the number of fruits increase with increasing proximity to the apiary. So the number of fruit increase with the as we approach the apiary. We also look at um, fruit weights and we realize that apiary present had no significant effect on the weight of fruits or, or the seed. Um, so this study highlights the importance of beekeeping for improved pollination of share. It also contributes to the argument for integration of honey beekeeping into share parkland management. This should be guided by placing bee colonies at effective distances for optimum pollination benefit. The gap that we identify in this research is how many uh, what should be the hive density or apiary density per uh, acreage of parkland to maximize pollination services. And uh, with this, I think this is my short presentation. And uh, I want to thank the Global Share Alliance for partly supporting this and Dr. Rafaela Kombi for identifying the bees. Uh, thank you. And uh, I'm happy to end the, the evening session. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think if anyone has questions, please put them in the Q&A or the chat and so that we can get them answered. Uh, so the first question is from Sarah and she asks, do your studies include stingless bee beehives? Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Oh, no, you're good. So Sarah yeah. asks, um, hmm? oh, so the question is, do your studies include stingless bee beehives? I guess in addition to, or um, in exchange of the honey bee hives. Oh, okay. No, the, the studies at the, at the moment, has been limited only apis mellifera. We are yet to involve stainless bees. Thank you. So another question is, uh, do shea farmers earn extra money from beekeeping? Is this is from Clement. Fact, that was the idea to also give them alternate uh, livelihood. So this project was funded by USID 
to empower the local communities with extra income from beekeeping. So we establish the APRs within the communities across the, the whole of the northern region of Ghana. And so when we were, we tried to evaluate this test, and we have tried to evaluate this, we, it was handy for us to use the APRs as reference point for the test. So then another question is, they want to know, so one, Wanja, I'm sorry if I mispronounced their name, wants to know what was the impact of hand pollination to the yield? Uh, it didn't have any significant from the open pollination. Uh, if you look at it, if I had time, I have gone back to the graph, you realize that uh, it didn't have any significant difference from open pollination, but it did have with the, uh, what do you call it, the, the bag, the bag or insect excretion uh, experiment. Interesting. So I don't know if there's any more questions, but I will now uh, send the presentation back to Victoria for ending statements. But thank you to everybody who was able to present, at least in the two sections that I moderated. It was very interesting. Um, so yeah, back to Victoria.